All right, so at the end of the last video, I talked about what Transact SQL was and how that was the language that Microsoft SQL Server uses. And let's just kind of delve into that a little more here. Now, everybody that's watching this is probably familiar with the idea of standards, right? HTML, XML, PDF, those are standards today that I think most of us know. Each of the companies that work with those standards get to decide how standard they want to be. <laughs> you know, as a, uh, I did the coding for the LearnItFirst.com website, and, you know, Microsoft has their own interpretation of the HTML standard. I'm sitting here scratching my head, pulling my eyes out, just thinking of doing Internet Explorer 6 testing versus IE7 versus IE8 whereas other browsers might have been very easy and a lot more what we would call standards compliant. So just because you have a language or a product that says it's standards based doesn't mean that everything is hunky-dory, as they say. Um, we, Microsoft SQL programmers and SQL Server query writers, are going to be writing our code in Transact SQL. See, technically, we aren't writing SQL. We're writing Transact SQL when we're working with SQL Server. T-SQL, uh, you'll see it with, an, uh, with the dash, without the dash. I'll probably write it one of four different ways. Uh, each time, I might even write it different every time you see me do it. I don't know. Sometimes I say T-SQL. Sometimes I say Transact SQL. Sometimes I say Transact SQL. I don't know. I'm rambling, sorry. <laughs> uh, it is a blend, like we talked about, of lots of standards, 1989, uh, 1992, 1999, 2003. Um, so, like I said, we are writing Transact SQL. That's what we do. Okay. So this is Microsoft's proprietary interpretation. Okay, so I'll give you an example. A uh, little Venn diagram does wonders for this type of thing here. So imagine over here uh, that this circle is the SQL standards. So I'll just put ST here for SQL standards. And then we've got this little circle over here. Sorry. And this circle is going to be Transact SQL or T-SQL. Okay. And you can see that we have a lot of overlap. And right here where we have this overlap, this is where Transact SQL implements the standard exactly as the standard says to do it. Okay, over on this side, we have this things that the standard says should be done, but Microsoft doesn't do. Now, to be fair, some of these are optional. Not everything is a required piece. Okay, so don't you know, start thinking, oh, that's terrible, Microsoft. Okay, they're not all, you don't have to implement them to be a quality relational database. Now, on this side, on the other flip side over here, these are what we would call extensions. Okay, so these are proprietary bits of code. The, if you write your code so that it's a blend of these two right here, your code isn't guaranteed to work on another platform, for example, because you aren't doing standardized code you're now doing proprietary code. And it'll work on other SQL servers maybe, but it won't necessarily work on Oracle, or on Access, or some other system that also uses a SQL standard, for example. I mean, that's the idea of standards, right? We standardize it so that we SQL query writers don't have to relearn absolutely everything when we want to move between Oracle and SQL Server. They're close enough to where you can actually do it without too much fuss. So just make sure you understand the idea of proprietary extensions. And to some people, that's very dangerous. I would never write my code so that it was proprietary. OK, I can think of reasons to do so and reasons not to do so. If I had to worry about portability, meaning that I wanted to write one set of code and that code runs on Oracle the same way it runs on MySQL, the same way it runs on Informix and SQL Server, you're darn right I want to do standards-based code. But if I want the fastest possible performance out of my system, if I want the best possible performance out of my developers, 
I'm probably going to go with some of the proprietary extensions because they're in there as optimizations. Generally speaking, that's what those are. They're optimizations. And, you know, it wasn't too long ago that stored procedures were an extension. Those weren't introduced until 1999. Most developers today wouldn't think of designing for a SQL Server-based system without interfacing with it using stored procedures. It would just be inconscionable for a lot of people. So I want to also make sure you know that SQL Server is not the only company that does this. Microsoft, rather, is not the only company that does this. Oracle does it. Oh, they all do it. Like, I'll give you an example here. Um, so where'd my little dot go? So here, you know, here's the SQL standard again. And then here comes Oracle. Uh, that's not fair. I'll make it even. Right? Here's Oracle. And they cross right here. And then here's all that proprietary code that Oracle uses as well. I meant to make those equal. I'm not trying to imply Oracle's worse or better or different. They're all the same. They all do this. Okay? So don't, don't worry about it. It just is what it is. Okay?